<laughs> All right, guys, here goes. I was telling you about the author, Nettie Okorafor. I really like her. I got two more of her books. But her book, <clears throat> um, Who Fears Death, the one I was telling you I read, looks like that. Oh, let's go back. It looks like that. And in you see a picture of an African girl and she's got like wings um, splayed out on her back like it's uh, overlaid in another picture. That's because she is, as the natives say, a skinwalker. She is um, a person who can metamorph into an animal and her animals would be uh, primarily the vulture. She can move into a vulture and fly over and see everything that's going on. Plus she can morph into other animals but in this Nigerian culture described in the book they're not called skinwalkers. Um, they are just the very special uh, beings who can come out of their physical form and go into the animal world. But in this story, she is the savior of her people, along with a man, a young man that she meets is Oye Songwu. Oye Songwu by uh, Ubad. Oye Songwu Ubad, and they call her Oye. But Oye is uh, six years old when the story starts out and then she goes to you see her at 16 and then we see her at 20 but in the story she is a child of two different groups her mother is Okiki and it's like a black African group and her dad is from the Nuru N-U-R-U Nuru group and they are more or less like um, Arabs we could say they're always at war, always fighting. So her dad's people uh, usually have the upper hand in society and the dominance in their society. And they come in and brutalize the Okiki, or I'm not even sure if they call it Okiki or Okeke, but the Nuru come in and decimate these people, killing them uh, in the streets, in their homes, raping the women, just outlandish things. So her dad is looking in particular for her mother to get her mother and rape her and then have a child with her that he says is going to be a son. And then this son is going to help him further decimate the OKK people or the Okiki people. Now the mother he doesn't know, as a new root sorcerer, he doesn't know that Onye's mother is also a, a sorceress. And she is just as bad as he is, but he doesn't know that right away. The reader doesn't know it either. But um, when he selects, singles her out, and he rapes her and leaves her uh, hurt and bleeding with the other women that his group attacks in the desert when they go looking for food and water, um, she asks Ani, the god, and the god's name in their culture is A-N-I, Ani, for the blessing to hear her and have her child not be a male, but be a female. Now, it's already a given that her child is going to be uh, Ishu or uh, Iwu, Ishu and Iwu, I should say. Uh, let me make sure those names are right because those African names are like, well, Ishu, that's right, she's Ishu, E-S-H-U, and Iwu, E-W-E. -E. All right, so that means that one, the Ishu means she's going to be special. She'll be able to be like a skinwalker and change from human form to animal form. And Iwu means that she is going to be of mixed race. Her father's race and the, the Arab looking people and her mother's race, the black Africans or the darker brown skinned Africans. 
Now, when you have those children, they're going to look a certain way. Typically, they're going to be much lighter, much, much lighter than black Africans. So, or darker Africans, I should say. And their hair might be bushy, but it'll still be of a different texture. And then sometimes their eyes might be lighter. So, uh, it's more like in this country, maybe albinos, when their skin is really, really white. Or simply when black people and white people mix in this country, sometimes you will have their children will be lighter than the darker parent. Anyway, uh, uh, Okorafor says, the author says that she got the idea for this character, Anya, when she read an article about one group at war with another group and the the lighter group wanted to not only just wipe out the darker group but wipe them out with lighter skinned offspring so that the darkness and whoever else they were before these people came in would be changed because their offspring would become lighter and lighter so they were using rape as a weapon and that it was called weaponized rape and she said that concept as an author was so different to her that she couldn't help but think about it and the character Onye slipped into her psyche where you have a character who is ostracized by society because these half, half Arab or half Nuru uh, people, uh, darker Africans looked at them as less than. You don't want to have a, a Iwu child because it was a dishonor. Usually they were uh, children of rape and not children of love. So they were ostracized and, and their darker parent was typically ostracized as well because they were, remind, they were a reminder that another group was always... Is something on? Oh, the unit over there is making a noise. My uh, humidifier, our humidifier. Okay, so usually these lighter skinned people were a reminder to the darker ones that they were always at war. Okay, but anyway, the sorcerer mother raises her little girl away from the darker Africans. And then when she's a, uh, in the desert, she raises her away in the desert. And when the little girl is of an age to go to school, then the mother decides it's best for her to join a village. And the village is Wahir. And they join the village to almost less, like, more or less like slip back into mainstream society so that the little girl could come into her being as being a savior for her people, the darker skinned people, and to, to help them liberate themselves from the tyranny of the Nuru. What does she do? She meets this big black man. Well, I should, I'm, I'm into color here. She meets this big muscular blacksmith who is single, who is working in his shop, and he's thirsty. She perceives that he's thirsty. She's drinking a cup of water. She's a little girl and she walks into the shop because she's just bodacious like that. She's not been used to being, oh, little girl, quiet. I'm so afraid I can't do this. So she goes in and tells him, here is some water. You look like you need some water. And she instantly becomes friends with him. And he, he looks past the fact that she's lighter skinned it, and she's this castaway little girl. So he treats her like uh, any other little girl that people would honor and respect because she's a child. And she brings him home eventually. He meets her mom. He marries her mom. And she's a part of a beautiful family until he dies when she's more or less like uh, 15 or 16. And she realizes her power that she has a power because when she touches her dead father as she's mourning him her hand goes inside of his flesh and meshes with him and he be he uh, uh, becomes his flesh breathes again and he's becoming uh, a living soul again and when her teacher sees this he's going to eventually be her teacher 
he knows that she has this tremendous power to bring somebody back from the dead. So he touches her and says, it's okay, let him go, let him go. And she doesn't know how powerful she is, so she's crying and she lets her dad go. And then she, in a little, in a scene, a couple of scenes later, she turns into a bird and flies to the top of a tree and she doesn't know how she got to the top of the tree and she's looking around like, hey, help, what am I doing up here? And that's when a guy that's going to be her boyfriend, Wita, comes along, helps her down and tells her what, uh, not who she is quite in that moment that she's like, that natives call a skinwalker, but, um, he lets her know more about who she is and he becomes her, her uh, right hand, her aide in life, her teacher, her husband, her boyfriend, her child's father. It's just a great story. So then all throughout this long story, she's fighting for her people and, and helping them through magic and sorcery, which is magic. But what, and the scenes are incredible I must admit I enjoyed those especially the scene where she was battling with her father and he turned into a tiger and killed her husband and she uh, fought the tiger and had him to come back into his body shaking and bleeding and then she realized that she had her husband's sperm in her body and she willed her egg to mesh with his sperm at that moment, working with the universe and created a baby within her. And when she did that as a sorcerer, all of the men who were able to have babies in the town died, instantly just dropped dead. And so the town was left with uh, dirt. Durfa, I think was the name of the town. The town was left with women of all ages, children, old men, maybe uh, younger guys, boys, but not boys that can have babies because they were dead. And guess what? Not only were all the men dead, but the women, all the women who were able to be impregnated and carry a baby, the younger ones, were pregnant. How about that? All the women were pregnant and the men were dead. Drop the town to its knees. That was a good plot, I must admit. Then they had to leave that town running because the women started saying, there they are. That one did it right there. That light skinned one, she did it. And they had to leave that town by hopping a boat and going to another place because those people wanted blood. They wanted blood. But it, it was it was great. You guys have to read it. I don't want to spoil any more for you. That is Who Fears Death. I must say the main character died in a number of gruesome ways in the story. Um, it, one was they put her in the ground, covered her up from here, and the only thing that was up showing out of the ground was her head, and they do this in Africa. I don't know if they do it in other places, but I, I did read that they do this in Africa. Um, and they, they threw stones at her head. And, and that is if a woman is pregnant and they're killing her and executing her, they bury her so they won't have to see, I guess, the baby pop out after they throw so many rocks at the person. But they threw stones at her head until she was dead. But guess what? They didn't know that she could a Lucy, a Lou, that she could a Lou. You might be going, what in the world is a Lou? A Lou is when you can break off who you are. Like if you're Claudia, you can become somebody else that's still Claudia and you can still live. So uh, her mom was able to do that and she was too. So I believe she, she, the story is she died in the ground like that but then she lived also because she broke off before they started stoning her. The story was gruesome in certain areas, but it was still a good story.